Hello and welcome to SGS Native's Nightmare. This video tutorial series will teach you how to understand the more advanced mechanics of the game and have a greater enjoyment. This video tutorial will concern the UI. And we'll begin by taking a look at the top right, move to the top left, down, and then to the other side. We'll take a look then at more specific things as they come up. So we'll begin over here. For example, we have the two flags of the Warsaw Pact and NATO. When we hover over the Warsaw Pact, you may see that we have 150 VP, 40 Treasury, 11 cards, and 118 replacements. You may see these icons representing them here. The star for victory points, the cash for treasury, the cards for cards, the heart for replacements. You may see as well that we have such nations as Poland, East Germany, Czechoslovakia, etc. You note that there is a number there to the right such as 89 and 108. This indicates the number of forces under the command of that nation within the alliance. When we move over here to NATO, you will note again 57, 108, 1 and 16. That is 57 victory points, 108 treasury, 1 card and 16 replacements, as well as the member states and their size of military contributions here to the fight. We'll move over to the center here where we have land movement. This indicates the phase that we are currently in. As you advance into the different phases, you will be consistently reminded of this. Over here we have a nuclear tension index. As the index rises, nuclear tension escalates and pretty bad things can occur. Bear that in mind. We have here our turn counter and date. When you press this arrow over here, you are given a number of indications of what is happening in the world at large as well as important reminders so do bear that in mind and do check this each turn it will give you an idea of what is happening in the world at large as well as the effects that may have on victory points of both sides we have here an arrow to indicate proceed to the next phase of course do this when you're completely finished your turn down here we have our map and our icons this minimizes and maximizes we have here open and close information. So for example, when we hover over here, we can see information. You may also gain this by right clicking. We'll close this here. Do note that we have a center view and we can see here the net stack that we have not yet moved. And you may do that by clicking this button here. This icon gives the political colors of the two sides. It has been a good way to see at a quick moment's glance who exactly controls what territory. We have here the supply filter. When I zoom out, you will see that the black checkered lines indicate areas that are not currently in supply, and areas with the green checkered lines indicate areas that are in supply. That will be very important. We have here our air stacking. So for example, when we move over here, we can see the amount of air units that can be stacked here. That will play a pretty large role in your games going forward. We have here our cumulative stacking, which shows essentially what we may have in that province. Again, very important. And moving down here, we have our units. This will show you what you have clicked on. So for example, the air mobile unit, the air landing unit over here, we can see what we have available. So this button here, minimize this one, browse allied stacks in the same region. Here we can see the number of units in the stack. We can see their strength. We can see their stack and value. When we move on to the unit itself, we see the nation of the unit, the name of the unit, its morale. And when I hover back over, its NATO icon designation, the type of unit it is, as well as its strength over here. As you can see, free, which indicates 100% and its stack and value. We can see that this is a land unit. Sorry, this is the land so you can see that we have a combat factor of three attack and two defense here on land. We have seven movement points here. When versus an air units, we have one attack and one defense. You may select this unit modifier over here and you can see how it impacts on other units and impacts on the game in general. You can see by having this unit here, it does give a plus one combat, which is very useful. Do bear that in mind, it will be very handy for you. We also can see here, more details about the modifiers, the type of unit it is, and whether it can actually follow breakthroughs, all very important. Here it indicates whether the unit is supplied or not, this indicates the foraging value, and this indicates the location. Very useful. 
We will then proceed on towards here, where we can display different combat factors. This is the combat factor for air. This is the combat factor for land. We also have buttons over here, such as entrenchment and split, which we have seen before. Moving on, we have our cards that have not yet been played. You may take a look at them at almost any time besides the loading screens, so do bear that in mind. And these cards have already been played. You are unable to take a look at them at any time and consult what they do. So bear that in mind, it does come in very handy. With that, we'll take a look at other icons. For example, we have this one over here, Strategic Transport. As you can see, 10 land movement, its effects, and basically what it does. I believe that will conclude the majority of things of the, the UI that players will see. But we'll take a look at some additional ones here, such as clicking on air bases and airfields. So you can see here where we would have ground units here. We can see the air units that we have, the nation it belongs to, the type of <laughs> asset that it is, as well as the factors over here for land and air. We can also take a look at cities, such as East Berlin. We can see the type of terrain that is actually encountered here. We may see how that affects the modifiers for attack and defense, whether pursuit is possible or not, whether breakthrough is possible or not, the movement cost, whether it allows supply, and the amount of forage that can be found here. Furthermore, you can see here the cost when the region is lost, the treasury, and the tension index, as well as when the region is controlled at the end of the game, you can see the amount of victory points there. When we click on here, we can see regions, which allows us to move around and select different provinces. We can also take a look at st structures over here and do much the same. Very useful to move around very quickly. And same as here, we can take a look at the units and move very quickly. I believe that will conclude the UI elements here. Hopefully nothing has been missed. Thank you.